Today we're going to talk to you about a new product we're launching called IBM Network Intelligence. Before we get into that, let's have a little thought experiment and think about a future world. Think about a world where you have systems where you're operating your network that can autonomously identify with trust issues as they're arising before they become outages or impacting and automatically remediate those. Think about a world where you deploy your CapEx just in time, not just in case something breaks, optimizing your spend. Think about a world where networks, which typically are less than 40% utilized today, can be run at much higher levels of utilization, maybe as cloud was introduced 90, 95% plus, which could open up new business models and new services that can generate value on top of networks. Now that world is coming, and let us tell you a little bit about how we're making that available. Firstly, networks are different, different to the rest of the IT stack. Many things are the same, data types, data formats, vendors, but they're different for two reasons. Firstly, scale, that comes down to a network being a distributed system, which suffers from what we call the shared fate problem. And therefore the management scope is much larger for networks as we need to monitor the entire deployed network in order to know if it's truly operating well. And then there's impact. Networks as a part of infrastructure have the potential when things go wrong to impact in the largest way on those services and applications running on the top. Now, many of you have been deploying automation for a long time. Um, the journey is not yet over, as you would know. We believe the best way to achieve your automation goals is to think about deploying autonomous systems. Now, autonomous systems actually are just like our brains, and they need two parts to be effective. They need a left brain analytical part and they need a right brain creative part. Now all of the innovations in Gen AI and LLMs today are all on that right brain creative part. So it's absolutely necessary but it's not sufficient. We also need analytical AI that can deal with the scale of telemetry coming out of networks and to understand and improve our signal to noise ratio. That's something that LLMs can't do because they can't and won't understand time. So we are launching a new product and that product is called Network Intelligence. It will cut across your siloed data and systems, giving you the ability to lifecycle manage your network, starting with day two operations. And in the future, we will come back through that lifecycle to give you use cases in day one build and in day zero design. But today, let us tell you a little bit more about the product in the day two operations space. Hey Ben, thank you, thank you, for, thank you for the transition. Uh, it's a good segue for me to um, take the network intelligence architecture. The um, architecture has this analytical right brain, which churns out these observations into the right brain, which has these um, iterative hypothesis for RCA. Um, IBM Network Intelligence can be put into assistant mode as well as into agentic mode. On the right hand side, once the iterative hypothesis for the RCA has happened, we have the option to do integrations through these agents which can do function calling into external systems like creating a ticket in an ITSM system or updating a ticket or calling an Ansible playbook or a Terraform configuration for automations. Let's look at this analytics pipeline. So the data from these external systems are then sent into what we call as these distributed nodes. Um, they are there for scale. They are also there for geographical reasons as well. Um, and have they, they have two ways of ingesting this data. You can ingest data in real time through a streaming pipeline or ingest historical data batched into this pipeline. The data comes in, we cleanse it, we extract metadata, for instance, um, device ontologies, 
textual descriptions, and then present that to these analytical pipelines. First, before we can even look at the live data coming in, the system has to get smart about what normal looks like for the customer's network. And, and if you look below there, what we have is a baselining pipeline, which has a, a, a less granular uh, periodicity in the sense that it periodically looks at historical data to learn the unique personality of every single metric of your network. It figures out, for example, if a metric is um, highly predictable, seasonal, or is very chatty, uh, or typically noisy or erratic. This matters because it allows our main pipeline, which is on top, the analytical pipeline, to be very efficient because it can allow it to select the best lightweight model for the initial screening of that specific data stream. Um, so for instance, uh, uh, for a seasonal metric, it would use a model which is really good at understanding rhythmic patterns, or for a noisy one, it will use a model which is designed to do really quick outlier detection. So this ensures we have really the right tool for the right job at the right costs, improving the speed and relevance of our initial findings. And before that, data is actually sent into more powerful, modern, and sophisticated time series foundation models. If you look at some of the outcomes that we want to drive, which are below these accurate observations, these silent failures, or what we are calling as these esoteric observations, it's really important to understand how we get to these outcomes. So the first major outcome that we want to drive here is this accurate observations, and it's really driven by our time series foundation model. The model is pre-trained by us to understand the nuanced behavior of the specific network domain for which it is pre-trained. For instance, it could be IPMPLS, SD-WAN, data center, radio access, so on and so forth. And the, 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 the architecture of these models allows us to uh, do something called as channel mixing in order to look at metrics across multiple different time and frequency domains, different metrics to understand their combined multivariate patterns across a single device or multiple devices. The next part is where things get really interesting. Um, because the model is pre-trained to a domain, we would expect really accurate observations to come out of it. Let's look at esoteric observations. This is really about finding those non-obvious patterns, which could be time series patterns happening across your networks. And really the goal here is to get to a point where we are not writing rules, but automatically spotting these patterns between two or more time series data that no one has realized had a relationship. And, and our anomaly clustering can detect this as an esoteric observation, flag it, and the next time it occurs, you can call that as an anomaly as well. Both of these combined leads to these early warnings, which are highly accurate with very low false positives. And we can then start doing these iterative investigations of generated hypothesis once these observations go into the right frame. Let's talk a bit about the IBM Time Series Foundation Model Ensemble. So there are two models that I want to get your attention to. One is this IBM Time Series Pulse. It's an ultra compact one million parameter pre-trained model specifically optimized for various time series tasks, for, for instance, multivariate anomaly detection, imputation, classification, similarity searches, etc. The other one is IBM Tiny Time Mixers. Again, it's a very compact model, um, starting with one to five million parameters, engineered for efficient multi, uh, multivariate time series forecasting. Both these models use an architecture called as the TS Mixer architecture, which is very lightweight, cost-effective, GPU inference is free. What IBM has done on top of these models is to provide streaming support for these models so that we can enable these model support for incremental real-time data ingestion and processing. We have really worked hard to get very, very low latency in terms of its inferencing. Um, in fact, we have around a thousand X improvement and the, and the, and the latency inference um, is around um, three to five milliseconds right now. The ability to pre-train this model, to completely change the weights of the model and pre-train it to a specific domain is an amazing differentiator that we have here because it drastically improves the, uh, the, the relevance and the accuracy of this model. And finally, 
once you take that pre-trained model for a specific domain, you can put it into a customer's network of the same domain, and you can fine tune this model in order to get multivariate anomaly detection um, outcomes. Once you've seen those details of those analytical pipelines, as well as uh, time series foundation models, the next logical question for us would be, what do we do with all of these accurate observations? Because observations on its own, um, like say, for example, there is high latency on a link, it lacks context. Um, is, it, is it on a critical path? Uh, which applications are dependent on it? What has this happened before? This context is missing from the left brain analytical side, al although the, the observation is highly accurate. So the first thing that the right brain agentic pipeline uh, would be doing is to run through these critical filters that you're, that you're seeing there. So the first one is this domain knowledge filter. It's really our grounding document section. It instantly searches our own knowledge bases, operating guides, historical tickets, for anything related to that observation. The second filter, which is really the external systems filter, is really how it looks outside Sturview, querying APIs, network source of truths, or other observability tools to get real-time context of what devices are involved and how they are connected, et cetera. Um, with that initial context, the set of agents powered by a reasoning LLM with a React pattern, with a chain of thought reasoning, Forms, starts to form multiple hypotheses about the root cause. And, and this is the important part. It doesn't stop there. Um, it actively goes out and collects more on-demand data to try and prove or disprove its own hypothesis. This iterative loop of generating a hypothesis, collecting data, scoring it, is really what enables that deep contextual reasoning that you see there as one of the key outcomes for this particular you know, pipeline. The second one is trust. Because the reasoning LLM is um, you know, the creative side of things, we need to invest a lot of focus on bringing trust, explainability, traceability, so that users can adopt these solutions. And this is where the scaffolding that we have put around large language models um, and becomes so important. Think of it as a set of guardrails for the AI's thought process or the inner monologue of this AI. So we use things like standardized prompts, tool guardrails to make sure the investigative process is consistent, repeatable, and safe every single time. We even have a context-locked assistant interface which answers only relevant questions which are related to network and won't answer if asked to create a tiramisu recipe. Although I'm tempted to ask it for a velvet VLAN parfait recipe as well. I don't know whether it will give that. <laughs> So on the embedded automation side, um, we had acquired this company called Client, which is a superb low-code, no-code API-led automation platform. And, and it has access to thousands of APIs uh, and from hundreds of vendors. And I think it's an incredibly powerful thing to bring here in terms of embedded automation, where we can present some of these APIs into the reasoning LLM for dynamic tool calling. We can even expose standardized workflows um, in, as APIs so that we can call, up, call these uh, workflows um, as part of the plan execution of the hypothesis. Finally, I want to talk about, you know, why this is all really powerful in its entire process in terms of its design to learn. So through reinforcement learning, when a human operator sort of accepts a hypothesis, the system learns from that successful pattern. Furthermore, our goal is to really you know, allow subject matter experts who can directly refine the agent's reasoning traces, essentially teaching it better ways to investigate as well. So this means the system gets progressively smarter and more effective over time. 